Hey y'all, in this video we're going to talk about simplified radical form in Algebra 1 and we're going to start by just talking about the rules for a radical to be simplified and I want to point out that these rules were created back in pre-calculator days when you had to do the arithmetic by hand and so these rules made it easier to do the arithmetic by hand. Now of course modern day we have calculators that can very simply find decimal approximations of things and do all of the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So they're going to seem kind of pointless, but this is convention in mathematics, and so we have to learn the conventions. All right, so let's start off with the first rule. And the first rule says the expression under the radical symbol has no perfect square factors other than one. And you'll notice I put a little rectangle around square. Um, that's not because a square is a rectangle, but because this actually can be replaced depending on the type of radicals you have. In Algebra 1, we primarily deal with square roots. I'll occasionally throw a cube root in there, but it's mostly square roots, so we're going to be looking for perfect square factors when we have square roots. But if my index were 3, so I was trying to find a cube root, then I would be looking for perfect cubic factors. Right? And so this is going to depend on the index of your radical. If you're trying to find the perfect fourth root, then I need something that's to the fourth power, okay? Other than one. All right. Now, sums and differences of like radical terms have to be combined. And I say like radical terms. Like radical terms are like values um, where underneath the square root you have the same value, like the square root of two plus the square root of two. That's not simplified but square root of 2 plus the square root of 7, that is simplified because they're not like radical terms. And then the two fraction ones, you cannot have a fraction under a radical that includes decimals. There's always a way to simplify that fraction and get rid of it um, from, out, from under the radical. And then the no radicals in the denominator of a fraction. We're going to chunk up these, uh, how to deal with these. So in the first video, we're going to talk about simplifying one and two, perfect square factors and like radical terms. In the second video, we're going to talk about the fractions. Okay. Now there is something I would like to emphasize in this video and repeatedly again in future videos that uh, there is something that you can do that is mathematically invalid and so mathematically invalid that we consider it to be evil and wrong. Okay, so radicals are exponents by definition. They're fractional exponents. So the square root is the same thing as raising something to the one half power. And by the order of operations, they do not distribute over addition and subtraction. What that means is there is no rule to combine square roots with addition or subtraction. I cannot say the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 is the same thing as the square root of 5 because it's not. Those are not equal. Okay, And I cannot take the square root of x plus 9, the quantity, and split it up into the square root of x plus the square root of 9. This is also not possible. These are two things you can never do with exponents or radicals. They do not distribute over addition and subtraction, so you can't sprinkle exponents, you can't sprinkle radicals, you can't separate them out. Okay, These are not things that you are allowed to do, so don't do them. 